Hi, my name is Vince Farrow and I'm an Applications Engineer at Hawkridge Systems. The goal of this video is to give you an overview of time-based motion analysis. If you don't know the timing of events in your study, then you need event-based motion. Please take a look at our channel for our video on setting that type of study up. Motion analysis is a powerful tool that's available if you have SOLIDWORKS Premium and or Simulation Standard. It can simulate moving or dynamic systems and will give you outputs to size your design. Some of those outputs are displacements, reaction forces, accelerations, and motor power. Before we get started, there's some assumptions that we need to make. First of all, you're only going to be able to use rigid bodies for this type of analysis. Uh, the material properties are all assigned to your part, so you get accurate results. And also, what else needs to be accurate is the mates. Um, that will give you proper degree of freedom definition so that things are moving correctly and the analysis is going to use those mates. Let's go in and take a look at an analysis that I've already set up here. I'm going to open up this crankshaft and you can see this is a crankshaft assembly that I've been working on for my RC car. I have all my parts, all the mates in there and if I just move this crankshaft about you can see how my pistons are moving in and out. It looks good, but what I really want to do is make sure that I have the proper sizing on my motor that's turning this crankshaft here. So I want to uh, set up knowing the RPM, make sure I'm getting the proper velocity on the end of these pistons. To do that, I'm going to do a motion analysis. And see down here at the bottom, we have a motion study already set up there uh, that comes with every assembly, every part. You can use that, but I'm just going to create a new one. When you see I create a new motion study, all my parts are available there, all my mates are available there. Okay, And you see the default here is animation. We're going to use motion analysis. Keep in mind, if you don't see that option, you need to enable SOLIDWORKS motion in your add-ins. The first thing we want to do is add in that actuator. Okay, So we have different actuators available here, motor, spring, damper, uh, force, contacts, gravity. And what these do is they simulate real world conditions. So in this case, a motor is going to simulate that motor on my crankshaft. It, I could set up different types of motor very comp in complex ways. I'm just going to use a rotary motor. That's fine. For the component direction, I'm going to pick that face. You can see the way the red arrow is going to rotate, so I can switch that around if I'd like. And then I can also just find that motion in different ways. Uh, I'll use constant speed, but you can do something like oscillating if you your motor is behaving like that. Okay. Uh, I'll hit the green check. Automatically the default time on the study is 5 seconds. I can adjust that by moving this black key in and out or that diamond. And you can also see this brown bar here matches the time that the motor is actuating on my assembly. If I wanted to adjust that time I can move it in and out and if I had more actuators on there you could adjust those again based on timing. All right, this looks pretty good, so let's calculate and run that study. So we can see all the moving parts there. Uh, looks pretty good, but more than just the motion, I need to know that velocity. To get that information, I'm going to click on the results and plots. I'm going to select a category for my, my plot. It's going to be velocity. We'll use linear velocity here and I'll put it in the Z component to match my global coordinate system. And pick the just one of the faces of the piston. Also you see it's plotted against time so we can see hit the green check and see that information. And you can see here as uh, the motors going along the piston is going between 3 and negative 3 inches per second. Looks pretty good. I can play the animation see that bar as it's going through in time. So again it properly uh, size my motor based on that result. Let's do another plot that I can do. So we can do a force plot using and take a look at the motor torque. So let's just do the magnitude there. I'm just going to select that rotary motor again, plot the result against time. And we can see that torque 
it's pretty low so it's good I'm not overloading the motor the nice thing too after we get these results is we can export these into another simulation uh, for example a static analysis if you need to that's it for today's video I went over a brief introduction on setting up a time-based motion study they can get much more complex but at least we can set up a simple one and get some results out of it. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, please give the video a like. Subscribe to our Hawkridge Systems channel to see more videos like this one. And as always, thanks for watching.